It is February 2nd, and the Alaskan town of Nome holds its breath. Families shiver in their homes. There is a blizzard outside. A quarantine notice is posted on the door of the hospital as sick children struggle to breathe. All is quiet as the town desperately awaits the sound of dogs barking and a sled against the snow. In response to the diphtheria epidemic of 1925, the serum run sled dogs ran through the toughest conditions on earth to save the tiny mining town of Nome. This resulted in the transition from old to new technology and the changing of dog sledding forever. In late December of 1924, Dr. Curtis Welch was called to the home of a small Inuit family on the sand spit near Nome, Alaska. Their child was sick with what appeared to be tonsillitis. The little girl would not live to see the new year. Dr. Welch diagnosed several more children with similar symptoms, but the gray mucus in the back of the children's throats was a deadly reality check. Nome has been struck with diphtheria, an airborne and highly contagious respiratory disease. An icebound Nome stood no chance at facing the immense epidemic that was upon them. The only serum they had expired over six years prior and was left unusable. On January 22, 1925, Dr. Welch sent out a telegram. An epidemic of diphtheria is almost inevitable here. Stop. I'm in urgent need of one million units of diphtheria antitoxin. Stop. Mail is the only form of transportation. Stop. The Alaskan governor located 300,000 units of diphtheria antitoxin in Anchorage, over 500 miles away. Sub-zero conditions made the trip by open cockpit airplane deadly. The serum would have to travel by land. There was a plan to try to get planes in there because their aircraft uh, were flying in Alaska at that time, 1925. But the weather was so bad that they had to depend upon uh, dog teams. There was a bit of competition going on between the pilots and the dogs and the teams. You see, the pilots wanted to get there, uh, but the weather wouldn't let them in. And this was kind of a... Um, competition uh, between new technology and old-fashioned technology, you know, who was going to win. Alaskan railroads could take the serum as far as Nanana, a town near Fairbanks. From there on, it was up to the sled dogs to run the serum to Nome. You know, we think, well, why use dogs? Uh, we could go by a plane or we could take the train or something like that. Well, no. You're going to go anywhere, there's only two ways in the winter, and that's to either one walk or two take a dog team. Sled dogs have been used for centuries by natives of the Alaskan tundra. The stamina and durability of the Siberian husky was the reason they put them to work transporting goods and mail. Their ability and willingness to run made them the ideal leader in some of the harshest conditions on earth. On January 27th, the serum left Nanana along the Yukon River, with musher Bill Shannon directing the team. Each leg of the race varied from 20 to 50 miles between each handoff point. The only stops were made to warm the frozen serum for 20 minutes. Then the dogs and musher would return to running on the trail. Shannon's team managed to run 52 miles in a matter of hours, through temperatures of 56 degrees below zero. These conditions are life-threatening. Being in these temperatures freezes skin and the blood in your system begins to coagulate. Snow and ice would work its way into the dog's paw, which would cripple the dog and slow the team. The intelligent dogs knew that they didn't have to run, yet they continued on as their mushers pushed them dangerously through plunging temperatures as low as 70 degrees below zero. Over the next five days, the serum was swiftly passed off from musher to musher. While in Nome, Dr. Welch struggled with the alarming amount of new cases developing. The condition of the patients was deteriorating rapidly, and he had no choice but to use the expired serum. It did no good, and the infected continued to die. On the trail, famed musher Leonard Seppala raced to get to the handoff point. His lead dog, Togo, was a racing dog, and his personal favorite. 
he had the difficult choice of whether he should go around Norton Sound or take a risky shortcut straight across the ice, which could break at any moment. Seppala chose to run across the frozen bay, which broke up just a few hours later. His team had led through 91 miles of the most dangerous part of the serum run. On February 2nd, 1925, musher Gunnar Tassen raced his dog team down Main Street in Nome ahead of schedule. He handed the serum to Dr. Welch, frozen solid. He then went and collapsed in front of his lead dogs, Fox and the famous Balto. Altogether, 20 mushers and over 200 dogs had run 674 miles in five and a half days. The remaining 30 cases of diphtheria were cured and the population of 1,600 people was saved. And every dog team that got to know got there because of the leaders. I mean, it, it's, it's, when you don't go anywhere with a dog team, you don't have somebody out in front. It became uh, one, of the, one of the early media uh, sensations of the period, 1925, was uh, broadcast uh, the newspapers uh, and radio all over the world. It was a message of technology, and, and it's a lesson that we can learn today, that despite all the modern new technology that we have, we can't lose the old skills. Despite the fame that dog sledding was receiving at this time, it was the end of a great age. Flights out into Alaska suddenly spiked. Soon, everything was being sent by newer and faster forms of transportation, leaving the sled dog's tradition to the Inuits. Throughout the following decades, dog sledding was nearly left to be forgotten, a memory of Alaska's past. Uh, we started talking about 1970, and at that time the, the snow machines were coming in big time up here. The, you know, the, so those of us who had been rushing for a long time, we were concerned. What's going to happen to the sled dog? In 1973, Alaska started holding the annual Iditarod sled race, which is a commemoration of the freight route to Nome. Over 60 dog sledding teams participate each year. The memory of this inspiring story of leadership led to many modern races, not only in Alaska, but worldwide. Nearly 70 years later, the story of the serum run was brought yet again to the silver screen. In 1995, Universal Studios presented the animated tale of a sled dog saving Gnome. Based off of the original story, it appeals to children worldwide and shows the leadership of these dogs. I think coming down through the through the years, the fact that we're still, you know, still interested in dog sledding and racing dogs does go back to some of those remarkable stories about the things that they accomplished. It took a lot of confidence and a lot of courage on their part to you know make it through those conditions and uh, it's, it's really a, a remarkable thing that they did. Without the leadership of the serum run sled dogs the town of Nome would have perished. There was no other way to get to Nome in this kind of weather and yet they managed to push through the harsh conditions of the final frontier when knowing that they didn't have to. Without their leadership spirit and passion for running none of this would have been possible. After the serum run the governor succeeded in getting more planes to fly to the towns out on the Alaskan frontier, gradually changing the dog sledding tradition from transportation to recreation. The legacy of the serum run lives through the dogs who continue the tradition of dog sledding today. And because of the serum run, nearly a century ago, dog sledding is, and forever will be, a tradition of the Alaskan tundra.